but making time uh, for sleep, I think, is, is a very important aspect of a healthy lifestyle. And interestingly, there are now data to suggest that if, if you sleep longer, it is, for example, easier to adhere to a calorie restriction type of approach and weight loss uh, may be more efficient if you combine calorie restriction with uh, making more time for sleep. Short sleep is associated with obesity, certainly, and probably also with diabetes and cardiovascular uh, disease. Apparently, sleep is doing something very fundamental to the processes that regulate our energy intake. In, in fact, when you, when you disrupt uh, sleep, uh, not just by shorter sleep, but also by frequent uh, awakenings, and, and you then look at uh, insulin sensitivity, for example, you can see that only a few nights of insufficient sleep will lead to a reduced uh, insulin sensitivity, which, of course, is, is a pretty fundamental uh, process in, in relation to glucose metabolism and, and, and all the other processes involved. We are very much interested in, in, in the regulation um, of sleep. What are the mechanisms underlying the timing of sleep? What are the mechanisms which determine the quality of sleep? How does sleep change with age? And then, of course, we are very much interested in what is happening if you do not get enough sleep? And how does this change physiological functions? And could those changes maybe be linked to some of the adverse health outcomes related to insufficient sleep? as described in, in epidemiological studies. There are some people, I mean, famously Margaret Thatcher is one example, who survived on less than three hours sleep a night, for example, and they did that for years and years. Uh, are there some people who are genetically able to sort of counter the, the negative impacts of lack of sleep? Margaret Thatcher and, and short sleep is, is a very well-known story. Uh, there are a number of people who also know that she was caught napping quite frequently, so how much sleep she actually got is uh, unclear. Uh, and, and then, of course, we should also uh, realize that short sleep or sleep disruption uh, has been associated with cognitive uh, decline as well. Having said all that, yes, there are individual differences in, in sleep need, and what we understand very, very well is that newborn babies, small children, sleep much longer than young adults. What is probably less known is that there is likely to be a continuous reduction in sleep need as we grow older. And there is probably a group of people who spend too much time uh, in bed. But then, yes, within each age group, there are individual differences. But when we talk about sleep need, we also need to think about sleep need for what? Because you may be very good at functioning in your office on just four or five hours of sleep, but whether 10 years or 20 years later, that short sleeper will then be the one who will develop a cardiovascular condition, we do not know. But what we see in, in the area of sleep and metabolic health is that the field recognizes we now have to move toward cohort studies or we need to move towards interventional um, studies. The associations are there, the short-term laboratory studies are there, but what is happening if you're going to change something about sleep uh, over the long uh, term. Uh, and the sleep researchers and the circadian rhythm researchers like to emphasize that sleep certainly is a modifiable lifestyle um, factor. And if, if you sleep more, you will be less hungry. It's also true that when you don't sleep uh, enough, you actually are going to make an unhealthy food a choice rather than a healthy uh, food choice. So, so now we hope to do interventional uh, studies and, and see what those longer-term effects are.